Why are we paying for electricity when it's free? Have you ever wondered if free energy exists? It is clear that our ambient atmosphere is fully loaded with electrons and ions. Made evident by the millions of lightning strikes around the world happening every minute of the day. Can we harness these atmospheric electrons? As you may or may not know or have heard, that the Earth is basically a giant capacitor in which the ground is the negative plate and the sky is the positive plate while the air acts as an insulator. Negative and positive electrostatic fields build up between the Earth's ground and sky and an ion trail is formed between the two. When the two connect, boom! You have a brilliant and giant electric spark. It is a scientifically known fact that there are electrons, or electricity, and ions in the air along with various other gases such as nitrogen, oxygen, argon, helium, methane, and water vapor. It is also scientifically known that a process exists that creates an anomalous energy amplification called an electron avalanche. An electron avalanche is a process in which an electric field causes an acceleration of the free electrons in a medium such as the air. Nikola Tesla originally invented the once popular 1980s novelty item, the plasma globe. While experimenting with high voltage and high frequency currents in a tube with the air vacuumed out of it for studying purposes, he called it an inert gas discharge tube. The plasma lamp is normally powered by a wall adapter connected to the wall. Wall power of an average of 120 volts of AC is stepped down to around 12 volts or so of DC, then fed to a power inverter that feeds a high-frequency oscillator of approximately 35 kHz in which its output is then fed to a step-up transformer which produces a high-frequency and high voltage. The high voltage coming off the one end of the single one wire can be seen here as a small spark of around one eighth of an inch or so. This small spark is essentially the power that is put into the contraption. Take a look at it and take note of how small it really is. Since these kinds of electrical tendrils wreak havoc on meters, a good method of estimating the amount of power is by observing the length and width of these plasma filaments which may or may not be considered a spark. Do you consider plasma as sparks? Or simply the result of high voltage sparks? The voltage can be estimated by the length, while current can be estimated by the width or thickness. At least with normal sparks this is how it is estimated. Normally the radio frequency energy from the transformer is transmitted into a gas in a globe through an electrode at its center. Instead of a glass globe, a small incandescent bulb takes its place. This is a circuit that was taken from a common lightning or plasma globe that can be bought almost anywhere. The high voltage single wire electrode and connecting circuitry were taken out of the inner electrode sphere in the outer glass insulator. The high voltage one wire energy is then connected to the bulb space via a small spark gap. It is not certain what is actually inside of this particular bulb but most bulbs are simply airtight or have an argon inert gas inside of them. Next take a look at the output. Notice how much bigger the electric glow discharge spark is. Well, you could consider it a spark but really it's a corona discharge plasma or electron beam. Take a look at how much more light is being emitted in this little incandescent light bulb. The plasma filament is most definitely emitting heat from the current that is flowing through it, which results in a magnetic field as well. What is for certain is that there is much more light contained in the bulb than there is in the spark at the input. Do you think it is possible to harness this output light in a usable form? Perhaps using a few plates or electrodes placed inside of the bulb with positive and negative wires leading out of it could lead to a working unit. Although it is just the excitation of the gas molecules or even the vacuum inside of the bulb, do you think this represents actual energy? Do you think that there is more energy inside the bulb than there is at the input where the small spark is located? After all, 
We do know for a fact that light is energy because it is a vibrational high frequency, and we also know that heat is a vibrational energy, as well. Although we do not know at this time how much actual heat is in this simple experiment. Which do you think hurts the worse? The bigger and thicker plasma discharges at the output or the smaller spark at the input Thanks for watching, and as usual, please like, share, comment and subscribe. Oh, and one more thing, if you found this somewhat hard to understand, it really isn't. Please rewatch and listen carefully to each and every word over again, until you do understand. At least a little bit of it. The idea is easy, just grab the electrons out of the air and use them for a renewable energy source like we did.